All right, uh, here we go. Continuing our way through the digestive system. The chyme has just been squirted into this duodenum here. You may notice that the duodenum, uh, if you can see it, yes you can, There's this is the pancreas leading in right there. The pancreas is gonna produce a lot of the enzymes that are dripped into this uh, duodenum. You can also see a, uh, these little rings almost, these little ridges that are inside of there. Those are called the plicae circularis. And what they do is they kind of uh, provide like a lot of these folds of sur surface area, but also uh, a means by which the intestine can propel the food down through it. So the first section here is the duodenum. The jejunum in this model is just mixed up somewhere. The duodenum is only you know, a few centimeters long, 20 centimeters or something, I forget. The middle bit here is uh, quite a bit longer, the jejunum, and then the ileum is toward the end. And you're not going to have to determine which one's which on this model, just duodenum for sure, ileum for sure at the end. So the last little stretch of this small intestine right here is the ileum. Uh, the uh, ileocecal sphincter is right here, and that's going to be where the, uh, the digested, mostly digested food um, enters into the large intestine. So this is the large intestine, this, this gray colored thing. It's not really gray in real life. So uh, this little pouch right here at the end, this is your cecum. And the cecum is kind of like a blind tunnel. So uh, there's a lot of um, good bacteria, so they say, in here, or the, as they call them in here. And then you can see this is the little, this little noodle sticking off here. That's your appendix. And it's called a vermiform appendix because vermiform means uh, worm-shaped. So you can see how it's kind of a worm-shaped. Now, in a lot of other animals, uh, the, the cecum is much larger, and it actually forms a big coil or something. And a lot of animals that eat real raw vegetation will use that to kind of store it and ferment it and break it down. But we, we have a much more refined diet, so we have kind of a, a very reduced uh, cecum, very reduced appendix, uh, which you basically can think of as an extension of the, sweet, of the cecum. Um, and in here, you, you, you have a lot of lymphoid tissue. Your digestive, your stomach, I'm sorry, your large intestine has got a lot of lymphoid tissue, and so does your ileum right there. If you remember those pyres patches, those were located in here. In any case, now this, now for the rest of this trip, we're gonna go up here, okay? So this is your, this is your colon now. We're in our ascending colon. We're in the transverse, which has been cut away, which would go across over to here, transverse colon. Descending colon, like this. Uh, you're gonna to get to the sigmoid colon, which isn't really seen, but it'll be like a little S-curve, uh, followed by the rectum, which will be the, the tube just before it's ready to, to, to exit, the anal canal, which is right in here, and then the anus, which is this thing. So the, the anal sphincter is gonna be another ring of uh, smooth muscle around there. You have, you have two actual anal sphincters. You've got a, an internal involuntary one, which is you basically have closed all the time, and then an external voluntary one, which is that one you that one kicks in if you really got to go, uh, and you know when you when that one kicks in. Um, that's oh I'm gonna trans that's it cut.